Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this channel ad-free. Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike, and this is an interesting ink that I picked up from Cult Pens on my last big order from them. I've never seen it anywhere else, and it's not a brand that I knew about, so that's why I picked it up. This is from Campo Marzio, uh, and this is called Tobacco, which, you know, this looks like the coolest one. It's a little 30ml bottle, it's got this interesting box, it's got this interesting bottle, which is a little plastic bottle with a metal cap, a nice label, uh, and the bottom, you can actually see the bottom of this should be translucent or transparent, uh, but there is like, there is a little sputz in there. And I think this is on purpose as we'll see in the ink, but there is a little bit of like, I don't want to call it sediment, but like maybe a, a dye particulate or maybe like a little bit of a pigment. I have no information. I can't find any information on that, but I think this ink is fine and that's just of the way it is. It shakes into the ink. Uh, just fine, and then we'll see it on the page. I picked this up for, it was $7.05 at Cult Pens, which, you know, why wouldn't I try this out? It's really interesting, and this is what this color looks like, which, frankly, is a little strange, right? I wasn't sure what to expect from this ink because there wasn't really uh, an ink swatch available, and I can't find any information on it, and it looks like it's been maybe reformulated or disappeared for a while and come back. There, it, information is hazy, but as you can see in that swatch, there are little gray bits like in the ink. And you know, I like a little bit of a particulate in an ink. That's what I did with Cheerio Water Bus with the blue, and I love that in other Pannonia inks. And it looks like maybe Campo Marzio is doing something like that as well. So uh, you'll also notice that these two look quite different. And a thing about this ink that we've seen with a couple of other inks recently is that it really matters what pen you put it in. So I put it in this pen first, which is my, this is my very first Platinum 3776 Century. And this has the music stub, which is my favorite music stub. I love this nib. And I said, you know, this ink looks like it's gonna be thin. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. Let's put it in something big and wet. And so I did. Uh, this is a big, wet, but very consistent nib that I like a lot. And I actually like this ink in this nib. And so I then said, I wonder what it's like in a smaller nib. Let's put it in just like a medium. And as you can see, it's horrible. So I've got it in this pen, which is a Diplomat Arrow in the champagne color. And this has a medium Yovo nib, which is a, a, a nib that is really well known to me. I have a zillion of these. And these Diplomat nibs always write well, and I know that this one does. And I straight up hate this ink in this nib. Look at that, it is unusable. Uh, so don't put it in a small nib, put it in something big and wet if you're gonna use this ink. Uh, but look at this. Look at this, that's bad, that is unusably light. It feels bad on the paper, I just, I don't like it. But if you put it in a big nib, it is an entirely different creature, which is pretty cool. Uh, so a whim, a hunch, some science, blech. So here's the weird thing, it's extremely watery, uh, like it's a very thin flowing ink, but when you put it in a music nib, it works really nicely. So, you know, that's fun for science. Let's do some uh, let's do some little water drop test. Look at the chromatography. Check it out on some other papers to see how these uh, react. And uh, then look at a couple of inks that are kind of close to this one. So here we go. Water test time. I'm not sure what this is going to do. Let's get a little bit of a shimmy. It looks like it's not doing anything, which is kind of cool. Once you see the chromatography for this, you'll know to, you'll know why I'm a little uncertain about what this is gonna do. Wow. Okay. Well, that's interesting. It looks it looks the same. So let's blot it up and see what's left. Because sometimes that's deceptive. Do we have a water resistant, super light <laughs> tan ink? Uh, yeah. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing. It didn't change. Like maybe, maybe a tiny bit of tan here on my paper towel, but it is basically unchanged. So, you know what? Let's do it up here. Um, let's put it some on. Let's put some up here because I'm curious. I'm curious what this is gonna do when you put it in like a really thin nib that's barely putting down any ink because I don't know. It just doesn't want to. <laughs> 
Uh, is it still water resistant? I mean, it's still pretty good. That was already terrible. It doesn't look it doesn't look much worse. But yeah, I think it did fare better with more ink, obviously. But it's not much worse. You can still read that. That says science. Really, that's that's unusual, and I wasn't expecting it. Here's the chromatography for this ink, and you can see that most of it stuck around down here where it started, which is kind of cool, but I didn't trust it to be water resistant. You get a little bit of a, of a gray up here, or like a little darker brown, a super sky blue up at the top, like robin's egg, like a really bright robin's egg. And then like, I think this darker bit down here is those little, those little pigmenty bits or something in the bottle. It's such an odd ink, and it almost makes me want to try out other inks from this series, almost. All right, let's look at this on a bunch of different papers. Here it is on our uh, trash tier paper from Staples. 20 pound, 30% recycled copy paper. Looks pretty good from this music nib up here. That's totally readable, uh, looks nice. And then actually it's a little bit lighter in person than it is here, but it's still absolutely readable. And then down here from this uh, this Diplomat Arrows medium nib, it looks terrible. It's, that's, it's streaky looking, it's just, I hate it. <laughs> But it actually performs really well on this paper. You've got a little bit of bleed through, but less than other things. Maybe because it's a lighter ink, but that's a music nib and the rest of these are not. So that's pretty impressive. I mean, of course, from the Diplomat, you still get a little bit coming through here. But, you know, there's almost as much through the back as there is on the front because it just looks like such trash on the front. It's so bad. I can't stop saying how much I hate it. So I did it on this paper. This is, I did two samples actually because I wanted to have both nibs represented. This one is a Nokko uh, note card, which takes fountain pen ink really well. No issues here, uh, except that it looks horrible and it felt bad. Uh, <laughs> has to stop. I wouldn't even do the entire... I wouldn't even do the same thing. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write this sample. Nope, hate it. I have to, I had to stop. Hated it too much. Looks good from the music nib. Behaves really well on here from the music nib. This is uh, HP Premium 32 pound, which is kind of on the like low end of good paper for fountain pens. You can see it came through here a little bit here and there, but no big deal. No feathering. I don't think it spread. It's just a very wide nib. It actually worked really well on this paper. So nib and paper matter hugely for this one. Lastly, a couple of uh, fancier papers. We have Gannon Leather here. This is the Tomoe River. You can see here it is from the music nib. Really interesting character on here. And you get a bunch of that gray, those little gray specks in this tobacco ink. And I think, the reason I think this is purposeful and not something gone wrong with the ink is because those little gray bits kind of migrate to the edge of your letters and they they look good on this good paper. Like, that really improves the ink. I think it would kind of really be boring without it. So I'm pretty sure that's on purpose. And then, uh, here's the one from the arrow where it continues to look um, unusable. All right, here it is on wheat straw paper in my Inky Fingers Currently Inked book. This is, uh, there it is from the 3776. You can see it, I had it right under uh, Arena Blanca from Monarca. And I did that sort of on purpose. I used this one, I'm like, I kinda like that. And so I decided I'm gonna ink this one up and see if I kinda like this too. Now notice, this is from a Twisby Eco with a medium nib. This is from a music nib. When we go to the other page where I used the medium nib, which is also a Yovo, like this is actually, this is a medium Yovo that they put, or um, a Yovo number like five-ish in the eco. This is a number six Yovo, also a medium, entirely different and way worse. So I kind of wonder what a Reina Blanca would look like if you put it in a truly large nib like this uh, 3776. It might actually be better, I, I don't know but this is horrible. <laughs> so uh, let's look at some inks that are kind of like this. Here's, here we go. I, uh, I put Campo Marie's though, I had, to, I had to correct it. So this is on a Colodex card. You can find this in a link down below from Well Appointed Desk. And you can see those little gray bits coming out in the top and then around the edges. Looks pretty cool. Then we have Arena Blanca because I thought that's kind of close, but these are actually entirely different tones. And then thirdly, if you want another kind of sandy tone, like depending on what your beach is like, it might be one of these. This is uh, Diamine Cult Pins Sand Between Your Toes, which is much more yellow than either of these. Uh, much, much warmer. 
I think, than these two. So cold, slightly warmer, much warmer is, I think, how color works. But, you know, it's it's unlike anything else I have. And that's kind of cool on its own. But, man, it needs a good nib. So there you go. That's a Reina Blanca. Sorry, that's not, not a Reina Blanca. That's uh, Campo Marzio Tobacco. Also, you can see right here which is weird and made me worried immediately is that I was using a glass dip nib pen for this. And as soon as I touched the paper, all the ink fell off the nib onto the paper. And I was like, Oh no, what's going on here? <laughs> so blah, I don't know what to tell you. It's strange. This is a weird ink. Uh, I don't know. Let me know if you would ever use an ink like this and what you might use it for, or if you know anything about this brand and, and what it's doing. Hit me up in those in those comments down there. Like, subscribe, hit the bell if you want to be notified about things, and uh, you'll see me in another video coming up soon. Peace out.